Thank you for having me. Um, I'd like to review a few things today, primarily the treatment of malignant primary brain tumors, specifically uh, high-grade gliomas and glioblastomas for which radiation is really the backbone of treatment following surgery. I'll also talk a little bit about stereotactic radiosurgery, which is one of the large parts of uh, pra the practice of radiation oncology for brain tumors. Uh, also, I'll review a little bit about technical advances, specifically IMRT and image guidance on treatment machines for daily use. One of the first large studies, actually, in radiation oncology was a study of brain tumors and the use of radiation following surgery for patients with malignant gliomas. So uh, one of the first large studies in radiation oncology at all was actually a study of the use of radiation for malignant gliomas and glioblastomas. And this was a study that randomized patients to either just supportive care following surgery, chemotherapy alone with BCNU, radiation therapy or radiation and BCNU chemotherapy. And you can see that the two groups who received radiation therapy had a significantly improved survival, which is here on the y-axis, uh, compared to the patients who had just supportive care or chemotherapy alone. And this really set the stage for the use of adjuvant radiation therapy following surgery as the mainstay of treatment for gliomas, and this was actually published over 30 years ago now. Another study that came out shortly after that showed that uh, patients really benefited the most if they had a higher dose of radiation therapy in the range of 60 gray compared to patients who had radiation in the doses range of 45 or 50 gray. And these patients all received whole brain radiation therapy, which was effective, but it was really quite toxic. So following that, there are many different studies done looking at the use of radiation for malignant gliomas, and several studies that showed that the use of partial brain radiation therapy was just as effective as whole brain. So partial brain radiation, just as the name implies, covers just the area of the, the brain that's affected by the tumor, and that's actually very much standard of care and has been for years now. There have been many other studies looking at escalating the dose or increasing the dose above 60 gray or adding a stereotactic radiosurgery boost following standard radiation or adding radiosensitizing agents during radiation. And unfortunately, uh, these studies haven't shown any, any uh, significant advantage over just standard radiation therapy to the dose of approximately 60 gray. More recently, there has been a large study that did show the advantage of using concurrent chemotherapy with radiation, and I'm sure Dr. D'Angelis will speak more about that in a few minutes. So stereotactic radiosurgery is another large part of uh, radiation treatment for brain tumors, and stereotactic radiosurgery is a treatment method using stereotactic or localizing in three-dimensional space imaging to treat with a single high dose of radiation. So most radiation treatments, as many of you know, are uh, composed of small doses every day over a two, three, or four, five, or six week period. SRS is highly conformal, allowing for a high dose to the tumor with very minimal dose to the surrounding tissue. It's used primarily for the treatment of brain metastases, as well as other benign tumors like acoustic neuromas, meningiomas occasionally, and pituitary adenomas sometimes. There are actually three different technologies to deliver SRS, including linear accelerators, which we use here, gamma knife, and cyber knife. Uh, all three methods deliver photon radiation to the tumor in a highly conformal method. They're just different machines, basically, and designs to deliver the, the exact same treatment. All three methods are equally effective with the same potential side effects and risks. Some of the advantages of SRS are it avoids the risk of hemorrhage, infection, and anesthesia that you have with surgery. It's also provided and performed as an outpatient treatment for, at most centers. It interrupts other therapies such as chemotherapy only minimally. And the results following SRS for a single small brain metastasis are really very similar to the results of surgery. So this uh, is a picture of a patient who has the SRS head frame fixed in place with four pins that are, uh, apply pressure to the skull. They don't actually penetrate the skull. After this is placed, the morning of the procedure, a CT localizing frame is, is placed on top of that, and the patient then enters a CAT scan. A CAT scan, you can see with the frame in place here, uh, is used with an MRI that's usually done a day or two before the procedure to help us define the target area that we want to treat. Once that CAT scan is, is acquired, 
the treating radiation oncologist and a group of physicists sit down to design the treatment and an arrangement of beams that will then provide a very conformal treatment, again, with a high dose just to the tumor itself and a very minimal dose beyond that. So this is a very typical plan. You can see the tumor outlined here in the bright pink. And then we typically add approximately a two millimeter margin beyond that for the high dose region of treatment, which is here circled in green. Just beyond that, you'll see this lighter blue line, which actually represents only 50% of the dose, and then this, this darker blue line, which represents the region receiving only 30% of the dose. So you can see that just beyond the high dose region here, the dose of radiation falls off very dramatically, which translates into very minimal exposure to the rest of the brain, and clinically means that patients tolerate this treatment extremely well, particularly in the short term or acute setting. Dr. Guten already showed you an example of this, but just to reiterate, patients typically have a really wonderful response to this treatment. Just prior to treatment, you can see the tumor here, we're in bright white. Uh, approximately two months after stereotactic radiosurgery, you see that the tumor is contracted quite significantly, and six months after stereotactic radiosurgery, there's essentially a complete response. So beyond stereotactic radiosurgery, there also have been some technical other technical advances in the past decade or so that have really changed our practice quite dramatically. Intensity modulated radiation therapy, or IMRT, is one of those technical uh, advances. IMRT is an uh, image-guided uh, 3D conformal radiation therapy that utilizes variable beam intensity de uh, determined via computer optimization. It uses something called inverse planning, in which we put uh, or utilize clinical ob objectives, such as dose constraints for normal or sensitive regions, and we specify those in advance, put those into the computer, and then, and then use a computerized optimization of these pencil beam intensities to meet the desired dose constraints. We do this for two reasons. One, it allows us to help, or helps to allow us to escalate the dose to the target very safely, and also it helps us to spare the normal brain tissue surrounding our target region. So this is actually a classic advan uh, example of how IMRT has helped us to uh, improve the delivery of radiation therapy. Following cranial spinal radiation for medulloblastoma, we give a boost to the posterior fossa, or the back part of the brain, where the tumors typically arise. This first picture here shows you the classic opposed lateral field approach to treat this uh, target region here. The target region is in bright green. You can see that the full dose, which is represented with this red line here, uh, covers a region beyond the target including the cochlea, which are here in blue and blue. The cochlea are the sensitive hearing structures. With the use of IMRT, which is demonstrated here with five beams coming in in different directions, you can see that this red line surrounding the target in green, the red line again is 100% or where the full dose of radiation is delivered, is constricted some and particularly off of the cochlea. This is clinically important as it translates into uh, preservation of hearing for these patients. We've taken it one step further here at Memorial Sloan Kettering and now actually use, in addition to IMRT, more selective targeting so that we just, we, we actually almost 10 years ago started just treating the tumor bed region alone for these patients. And with this more selective targeting and IMRT, you can see that the uh, full dose actually here represented in bright blue is much, is, is delivered in a much tighter, more conformal manner and decreases the dose to the normal brain uh, out in this region and further decreases the dose to the cochlea. This is now standard of care at Memorial and it's actually being tested in a, in a uh, national pediatric COG trial. So uh, we also have started using IMRT more routinely for the use of high-grade gliomas. And with our experience, our relatively recent experience with Avastin, we've now started uh, becoming or using a different treatment regimen so that we are treating with higher daily doses using the advances uh, we, that we've, we've designed with IMRT. IMRT again allows for more conformal radiation and uh, helps us to decrease the exposure to the healthy normal brain. With concurrent Avastin, we uh, have seen some improved tolerance of higher doses of radiation. So this is an example of a patient being treated on a new protocol that again uses IMRT to tightly deliver the radiation to our target area and Avastin. This patient here has 
you can see very faintly the tumor region or target area here is receiving a very high dose of radiation on a daily basis, six gray a day, to this bright blue area. And then the, the uh, slightly lower risk, but, but still a high risk area for recurrence is just outside that, that main target tumor area, receives a, a very purposeful four gray per day. And then I, I included this blue line here just to show you that this is the region where the tumor dose falls off very rapidly, which is just outside that high risk area. And right here, the, the dose delivered is only 50%. So you can see, with, again, with IMRT, we're really able to design and direct our radiation very purposely to the regions we want it to go, and then decrease the uh, normal tissue uh, exposure to radiation therapy, which really makes the, the treatment so much more tolerable for these patients. This is the same patient, uh, just prior, her, her MRI, just prior to treatment with, with radiation therapy. You can see the tumor here in the bright white region covering, covering right here. And approximately two weeks after finishing her radiation therapy, you can see the tumor now has contracted nicely. And most importantly, the patient tolerated her treatment extremely well and is feeling well at this point. So beyond IMRT, another technical, recent technical advance is the use of image guidance. Traditionally, we uh, image patients only once a week on the machine using megavoltage uh, films, which are the same strength of photons or energy we use for treatment. The disadvantage to megavoltage films is they really only allow us to image the or view the bony anatomy well. More recently, we've developed linear accelerators or treatment machines that have the ability to produce kilovoltage, which are lower energy films, uh, and this actually allows us to um, visualize soft tissue more accurately. We're now starting to use daily two-dimensional kilovoltage films for some types of patients in radiation oncology. We more recently have developed the ability to use or, or uh, create CAT scans on our treatment machines, which is very important for very precise treatments. This is a uh, um, uh, picture of a, the new type of machine we, we are installing throughout our department. It's called a trilogy, and it allows us to treat with the traditional uh, mega voltage, the linear accelerators behind here. Mega voltage photons uh, are produced from the head of the machine. But now, additionally, again, we have these two arms that produce and receive the kilovoltage photons that allow us to get these good images. Okay, so uh, uh, what I was describing is that we now have an ability to produce CAT scans on the treatment machine. So what that means is, well, for patients who have a target or a region we're treating that we need to be very precise with and have no uncertainty about the setup, we can set the patient up in, in the machine in, the, in what we think is the correct position take a CAT scan in that position and then check that against what the CAT scan we acquired when we were simulating the patient or designing the treatment, make some small adjustments in the patient's setup. Once we verify that the setup is absolutely perfect, we can then go ahead and deliver the treatment. So this uh, provides us, this image guidance provides us with near real-time verification and it really, again, helps us reduce the setup uncertainties with these patients. With the use of image guidance and IMRT, we are really able to achieve our full potential of conformal treatment, which again will help allow us to dose escalate or escalate the doses for, for patients who have tumors that need higher doses of radiation therapy, and also at the same time reduce the normal tissue exposure to radiation therapy, which again reduces toxicity for patients. So with that, thank you, and uh, Dr. DeAngelis will speak now.